I think a lot of you have probably heard about these rumors and whispers around Georgia's Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter, um, most recently made famous for picking Jaden Daniels up like a small child in the SEC championship game. You know, a man of a lesser character would have body slammed Jaden Daniels to the ground. But Jalen Carter's just not that kind of guy, is he? Or maybe he is. See, I'm not an anonymous person, so I have to speak responsibly of Jalen Carter. Not everyone fits that description. You keep your name anonymous, you can just trash this dude. Where's the evidence? We don't really have any evidence. It doesn't matter. We're anonymous. What am I talking about? Well, I'm going to show you a quote in just a second, but let me tell you how these things normally occur. I don't watch TV. When I tell you I don't watch TV, I mean I do not have a television in my apartment. I don't have one, period. The only TV I ever see is when the monitors are on in the office here. That's it. So I intentionally do not ingest any television. I live a very minimalist lifestyle. Uh, the best shows are out there. They're not in here. Although I do watch Yellowstone. And it really doesn't matter if you watch that or not because nothing happens in the episodes these days anyway. But here's what normally happens. When something gets said on one of these studio shows, on another network or sometimes even our network, I don't find out about it until you DM me or you text me about it. And not everyone has my number, so mostly it's DMs. And that's exactly what happened when Todd McShay went on uh, whichever show it is they have about the NFL draft, and he started speaking about Jalen Carter. Do we have the quote, Jesse? I want you to listen to this. Just picture Todd McShay's voice. With Carter, there are some character issues. Does he get along with everybody? What's he like to deal with in the locker room? Those sorts of issues. Huh. I know it's early in the process, but I'm forewarning everybody out there. Carter is going to be a hot-button name when we talk about some of the intangible aspects of it. Gasp. Uh, that will be brought into the discussion. I'm sorry, I didn't know the quote was over. We continue with the quote. It's not about his talent, his size, or his explosive takeoff or finishing as a pass rusher. It's about the character, and do we want to bring that guy into the building? That's enough. <clears throat> Did you notice the first part of this quote? Does he get along with everybody? Who in the world is draftable by that standard? Do you get along with it? I don't get along with everybody here. I get to work here. Fortunately, I don't get along with everybody here. Um, here's the problem. I got, a, I got a big issue with how this stuff, for lack of a, a more appropriate term, is handled. It happens every draft season. And um, you might be fooled into thinking because someone's on TV, they know more about these folks than you do. Actually, it's the opposite. The mock draft community does not learn about these guys nearly as early as you do. Now, here's what I am not going to do. So from this point forward in this segment, this is sort of a general point of view. I'm not going to direct it at Todd McShay. I, the, I don't doubt he heard something about Jalen Carter. I don't doubt that. I, I have far greater doubts that it's legitimate, but I don't doubt he heard anything. I just got a problem with how the whole thing's handled. I got a really big problem with how this anonymous intel is handled, especially when it comes to NFL draft season with college kids. I understand how anonymous sourcing works. I understand how it's sometimes very necessary to do quality journalism. This is not quality journalism. Uh, this is the NFL draft and it's rumors about a college kid which give him no recourse. I, I guarantee you if I set Jalen Carter here right now and you were to say, well, we, we have to keep it anonymous to protect the integrity of the player, uh, he would say, no, no, go ahead and share exactly what you have. Give me every single detail. And you'd probably curl up in the fetal position in a corner somewhere, which you should. I don't think there's much to this at all. That's what I woke up thinking this morning. Then I did some digging today. Now I'm really sure there's nothing to it at all. Uh, what I think you probably have is you've got a gross misunderstanding of what character concerns actually are. Your character concern is an NFL GM's green check mark. You see, because when... Normal folks talk about character. They're talking about it in the normal world. Football is not the normal world, guys. Locker rooms are not the normal world. And the field of play is not a normal world. It takes different people to play this game. That's why most of you can't. And it's why you pay big money to go watch the ones who can. Or you watch on TV and you, you marvel at the guys who can. You don't have a normal mentality to play this game. 
So everyone talks about character. And when you see a guy that doesn't carry himself exactly like the nine to five accountant does at your local firm, uh-oh, mm, maybe a little rough around the edges there. He better be. He better be, or he's going to put his life in danger on that football field if you play the level that Jalen Carter plays at, at least. Here's the other part of this. No one ever talks about competitive character. Like, everyone's talking about character this and character that, and you're, you're trafficking in anonymous sourcing and intel that you probably can't verify. What about competitive character? Why don't they talk about it? Because they don't understand it. Most of them have no clue what competitive character is because most of them have not been in the arena. And when you've been in the arena, you look at that word character a totally different way. You see, if I'm lining up next to Jalen Carter and he mouths off to someone in warm-ups, I don't care. You may put a great big X on his forehead. I can promise you nothing about him doing that is going to deter his ability to dominate at the next level. You may look at him skipping out on class and you may say, uh-oh, red flag. Well, it's a red flag if you're trying to get a law degree. This dude's trying to get a degree in football. Not that I'm making excuses for missing class. I'm just telling you when you do your due diligence on Jalen Carter, this is about the extent of the wrongdoing and the character issues you're going to find from him. Here's the other issue that I have a lot, and you got to be very careful with this one. A lot of people want to apply 50-year-old standards to 20-year-old people. Like if you're 50 years old, you have a lifetime of lessons that you've learned, and you got a lifetime, hopefully, of wisdom that you've acquired and accumulated. They don't. They don't. So they don't make the same decisions all the time that you do. That doesn't mean it's a character concern. It means the last thing on this planet you would want is the book opened up on you at 20 years old. And you're not living under that white hot microscope spotlight. So my point here is, I don't think there's an ounce of legitimate concern around Jalen Carter. I think it's BS when people quote that kind of stuff anonymously. If you've got specifics, you don't have to out your source, but man up and either say what you know or just don't traffic in it. The draft's not tomorrow. Christmas isn't even tomorrow. The draft's like five months away. So at the very least, if I'm about to go and put a kid's future earnings potential on the line because I've got a massive platform with which to say anything I want, the last thing I'm about to do is say, he's got character concerns. That's all I can say, though. If that's all you can say, don't say it at all. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.